Hey guys, the Mace Place here. Today I'm going to go over my Dragon deck. This is a Shivana Aesol deck that I've been using with uh, the new release of the next expansion, the next part of Targon that just came out with Shivana, of course. So let's get into it. So in this deck, there's like a lot of cards that can go into a Dragon deck. I think one big thing to say uh, before I go in the deck is that there's like 60 to 70 plus cards that could go in this deck. So I'll definitely make sure I talk about the ones real fast uh, after I show the deck about why I did include certain things. I think that could be added. Because there's a few different ways to play this deck. Uh, I got Diamond this season. so you, I was Master last season, so I started Platinum. I actually got Diamond with Fiora Shivana Challengers. Uh, this one's going to be more of a traditional one. This is going to be like the all-out dragon uh, ramp uh, with Eclipse Dragon and Aurelian Soul. You know, the full dragon package for the most part. So I'll make sure I'll briefly go over the cards that weren't included, but are still very good in this deck. But let's get into the deck. First card, Dragon Lieutenant. Uh, it's a new card, so I'll go real quick. When I'm summoned, if you behold the dragon, like you have one in hand or in play, you grant me challenger. She comes a 3-2 challenger for two. Um, really good at picking apart uh, certain early game strategies. If you can get it to get value, like you trade with like uh, an Omen Hawk or their own Herald of the Dragon, and then also block like a, another 3-2 or whatever, 2-3. It's good because uh, this deck has a weaker early game because it compensates by having a pretty strong late game with all the dragons. You still make sure you, you make it through the early game, and this card's pretty cool because it can help you in the early game, just being a two drop in general. But it also is good later in the game too to hook away blockers and go for game. Or I, I just think in general, like just speaking of the game as a whole, a three two challenger for two is pretty good. So yeah, he he makes it go. Um, two guiding touch. I'll actually go over guiding touch last because this was like the final edition of the deck. And it's important to explain why I play it uh, later on. Alright, but 3 Hail the Dragon. A lot of people don't like this card. I think it's very, 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 very important. Uh, especially in the Aurelian Soul Shivana decks because this is one of the main synergies of the deck. Look at the, the Dragon cards. They don't have actually as much synergy besides having Dragon in their name. And this card says Dragon Eyes costs one less. That's a huge part of the deck because it's one of the only main synergies of the Dragon deck. And it fixes your curve a lot because you can, like, there's not really three drops when I'm playing this deck. You could, like, add Fiora or something, but it's also a champ uh, champion slot for your deck. So, a good, a good way to fix the next curve and make it more consistent is have this as your two drop, and then Shivana or White Flame Protector come out on turn three instead of turn four, because they're discounted, because Dragon Allies cost one less. Um, it's, it's a really good card, I like it. Uh, it's a focal point of the deck, and, and it's also, you can potentially even get out Aurelian Soul on turn five. I've gotten Aurelian Soul out on turn five twice with this deck before, but even if it's not something as crazy as that, you can still do. Very good place. I think it's one of the strengths of the deck, or one of the whole point. The, the, the point of the Ace of Dragon deck is that the Dragon Eyes cost less. But let's keep going. Three single combat. Uh, generic. You know, generic spell to get rid of threats. Uh, can set up game by getting rid of their blockers. It's chainable to like your opponent's spells. If they're going like, to Ravenous Flock something, you can use this in response and get some value out of it. Uh, it activates Fury on the Dragon, so two mana. Well rounded spell. Really good spell. Um, you know, pretty much a must have in this deck. Three mobilize, reduce the cost of allies in hand by one. So mobilize and herald the dragon are usually what I mulligan for. I usually, for the most part, mulligan my whole hand for mobilize and herald the dragon. The whole point of the deck is to like ramp into your dragons earlier than normal, because dragons really are just big statted units with fury. So the point of the deck is to get them out discounted. Start put like you put down like a threat like early. Like let's say you put down like a fuse fire brand on turn four. A lot of decks can't deal with that. Like you know fury spell shield five five on turn four. I just can't deal with that. And once you can get the field control, then it just keeps coming. Like, you get, like, all the, the big dragons and stuff. But, yeah, Mobilize and Hell Dragon usually what I'm looking for. Um, you usually want to pass the first two turns if you have Mobilize to bank the spell mana. And then you Mobilize and make your whole hand discounted. Anyways, Shivana. Uh, four star, or her main role is she's a four-star dragon. Kind of like Wait for Protector. Uh, but she's a four-star dragon. But she can get discounted by Hell of the Dragons or Mobilize. Come on, turn three. And... When she attack, give you a plus, plus on this round. Uh, her level form is actually quite good. Uh, she's a bit understated, but I think I still play her because of the role she fits, as in making that more consistent by playing Herald on 2, Dragon on 3. With only White Flame Protector, then you had to have Herald White Flame Protector. But now with this, you have to have Herald or Mobilize White Flame Protector to do that. Now with this, you can have Herald or Mobilize plus White Flame or Shimana. So it actually becomes more consistent with the ramp strategy that I'm trying to employ here. Or at least the, the discount your Dragon strategy I'm trying to do here. Even if this card's just like, okay, cool looking though. But it's, uh, it's level's really good. It's not that hard to level up uh, if you have Screeching Dragon. You can attack with it. It's, that's, uh, I've seen Dragon Eyes deal 12 plus damage. That's already four. Then you play Screeching Dragon. 
And then you attack with Screeching Dragon in this, and then that's a level up. So yeah, you play this attack, next turn you have Screeching Dragon in this, that's a level up. Uh, Dragon Shivana, because you plus two, plus two. Four mana, four, five, that becomes way bigger. Uh, it's, good, it's good value for a four mana card if you can actually level it up. Uh, clear your freeing Strafing Strike in hand. So when it attacks, you get a Strafing Strike. An ally and enemy strike each other. So it's basically the same in combat, but if it's a, with a dragon, you heal to you at the end of the combat. Quite good, because it gives it to you on attack. It just kind of is really inconvenient for them. Because like what, after you attack, whatever they try and do the rest of the turn, you just kill it. Or you can even like kill their blockers sometimes. And give your guys fury. For spells, Shivana's Confront. Three mana grant an ally challenger. This card's not very good. Uh, I actually play it pretty much never. Honestly, I, at least in my experience... Uh, like, even in other decks like Deep, you play, like, Sat Magic, which isn't that good of a card with Maokai. I still see my, find myself using that sometimes, but very rarely use this. Um, I hope they buff it. Maybe give, like, plus one, plus one, or um, something else. I don't know, change it in a different way. But yeah, overall, maybe, maybe, I don't know if it'd be too good at two mana Grand Alley Challenger, because Grand is permanent. But anyways, yeah, Shivana's good. Uh, White Flame Protector, four mana Dragon, has Fury. Oh, also, this, is enough, this was enough Fury uh, until it levels up, but anyways. It's still, oh, still good. All right, so four mana, four four fury dragon, but can we just have the three mana? This makes that consistent. Uh, fuse firebrand, five mana five five fury spell shield. The reason this is important is that the spell shield, I mean, fury is nice, but the spell shield is really important because I run two judgment currently. Um, I didn't actually play this in like my first three days of testing. I played this deck for three days straight. When the set first dropped, that's all I did. If you guys were here in the Twitch stream, you know all I played was Shivana. I want to get Master Rank 1 with Shivana. Right now, I don't know if that's possible, but I'm still working on it. Because Shivana's a bit rough. I had to use other things to like, find a Master and stuff. And uh, working on ranking up. So, I did want to do a Shivana, but we're still working on it. Here's the best I've got so far. I think it's actually a pretty good deck. But yeah, uh, Judgment is good with Fuse Firebrand. Because if they like attack with a huge board, and then which is a lot of time they actually have a wider board than you. Because you know, you're ramping, you miss all your early game. And then you have Fuse Firebrand, and they attack, and you have Judgment. They can't really stop Judgment. They can deny it. Let's say they don't, you know, they're playing Deny. They can't get rid of the Fuse Firebrand to stop the Judgment from going off. So, yeah, very good. Um, three Radiant Guardian. Uh, very good. Even after her nerf, she's still absolutely amazing. Such a good card. Uh, phenomenal versus aggro. Really good against a lot of mid range. Grants Life Steal and Tough when uh, something dies this round, or even dies this round. She can be discounted off of the mobilize and she's I mean at five she's still amazing but she can just have mobilize even cooler she can get on four if you're being pressured too hard by aggro and she's good with judgment because if you judgment with her and kill their whole field you heal your whole life back to 20. Uh, overall pretty hard card for opponents to deal with a lot of matches especially aggro and mid-range so this card's really good uh screeching dragon this this is this this is one of the better dragons this is a five mana challenger a theory four or five so you just play and start picking apart their threats and then it gets stronger, so that's good. And it, coming out in four is actually, actually like when it's discounted off Herald of the Dragons or Mobilize, this is very good on turn four. I mean, turn four, four, five, Challenger Fury, that's amazing. Uh, okay, next card, new card, Eclipse Dragon. This card's pretty sweet. Uh, seven mana, seven, five of Fury, but the important part is Daybreak, so it's the first card you play this turn. The next dragon or celestial unit you play costs two less. Nightfall, create a random dragon, follower, and celestial follower in hand. You use both effects actually a lot. Uh, I usually use the Daybreak a bit more, but I've been using the Nightfall one more lately because. When, it, when you run out of steam, it's just good to be able to refuel. And on average, the Dragon Celestials are both pretty powerful cards, so that's good. But the main combo you want to get is if you... I mean, this is like a really good hand. Like, you're not always going to get this. But this is something that does happen somewhat frequently. Is you'll have, like, Herald of the Dragon, Mobilize, Eclipse Dragon, or Relian Soul. And you can play Eclipse Dragon on turn 5 with the Daybreak. The next Dragon or Celestial you cost 2 less. And then Relian Soul on turn uh, 6. So, yeah. Because if it, the Mobilize and the Hail both discounted. So, yeah, you get Eclipse Dragon on 5, Aurelia and Soul on 6. Really good. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone knows. Getting Aurelia and Soul on 6 is amazing. I've actually got it on 5 twice. Those are, like, insane hands where I, I think one of them I opened, uh, I think maybe both of them was Mobilize, Double Hail of the Dragon, Eclipse Dragon, Aurelia and Soul, got Aurelia and Soul on turn 5. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, a lot of fun. But, yeah, really good card. Uh, versatile. I like it a lot. And, yeah. I usually use the, the, the Daybreak. Well, the Daybreak effect is best with the Rallian Soul. What you want to do is you want to use the Daybreak effect to get Rallian Soul out early. But this is really good to refuel, because a lot of times if you have Mobilize, 
and you mobilize your hand and then kind of just start slamming down your creatures that are discounted, you run out of steam pretty fast. You have a good board control, but you have no follow up when the game gets uh, later later into the late game, and you know your opponent has like all kinds of good stuff going for them and tons of cards. Uh, you were kind of run out of steam, so this is good to refuel. And like, as I said, dragons and celestial flowers are pretty powerful. But yeah, um, next we have Infinite Mind Splitter. Play this in and out of the dragon decks. There's so many different variants of this deck. Uh, I'll make sure I briefly go over it because I do want to, um, you know, I don't talk about it forever, but I do want to at least briefly go over like the other cards or variants. But yeah, anyways, Mind Splitter. I'm sure you guys can tell this card is pretty good, right? Uh, 8 mana, 8 8, Fury. Pick two enemies, stun them, which locks them out. Like, usually you can pick two enemies, lock them out of the game. It's very good versus Lee Sin and other things. I mean, this card's just one of the best dragons in the game. It's, you know, played outside of dragon decks. It's that good. Um, this and Screeching Dragon are both kind of played outside of dragon decks. But yeah, very good. And you, you can get discounted early. I mean, you can get this out on turn six in this deck uh, and turn seven pretty frequently with uh, the Mobilize and the Hail of Dragons. And the last card's a Brilliant Soul. Uh, this is your win con. This is your late game. One of the best parts of the deck is that you can ramp into this. His Chef Soul is actually quite good in this deck. You have 15 to all enemies, cost 2 less for each dragon. You can get this off decently often. But yeah, pretty easy level up because all your dragons are so strong. Um, Equips Dragon, Infinite Mind Splitter, Relian Soul is, is 25 out of 25. Round, he levels up when you end the round with 25 plus total power of your allies. So 10 here, 7 here, 8 here. So you just go Equips Dragon, Mind Splitter, Relian Soul, and 25. You need to level up, and then all your Celestials cost zero. Very good. Very good late game. Uh, Spell Shield, Fury, Dragon, yes, now. All right, let's briefly go over, like, other cards um, you'd be playing. So, Fiora, I ran. I have a Challenger version. You can see my mobile looks on my decks in the um, description below. I'll have all my decks there. I, I did get Diamond Fiora Challenger um, Dragons that utilize, like, Dragon. Oh, and, and Guiding Touch. Okay, let me explain Guiding Touch real quick. I almost forgot. Uh, so yeah, this this deck, it was 38 cards, and then um, the last two cards I did want to Shield Bear or Guiding Touch to help uh, heal or help defend against aggro. Earlier in the game, Shield Bear is a lot better against aggro, or maybe even Egghead Researcher to just have more blockers instead of two drops, because um, you, you need some help in the early game. But the reason I chose Guiding Touch over like Egghead Researcher, which is like a decent blocker early game, but also could be better against just the general decks that gives you a dragon. Or Shield Bear, which is really good for Zagro decks, but it doesn't give you a dragon. I chose Guiding Touch because you can draw Guiding Touch later in the game. Like Shield Bear and Egghead to be effective to help against like early game pressure. You have to have them in turn two and play them right away. And that's how they block. But if you draw them later in the game after you, let's say you didn't open them. And your opponent has done some pretty good damage to the early game. And you're trying to get your footing with the dragons, but you're still a bit too far behind on life. And they're going to they're gonna finish you off before you can really get everything going. If you draw Shield Bear, or actually had a Researcher, they're not going to help you. It's too late. They, they need to be blocking on turn two. But Guiding Touch is very nice because you can draw it later into the game and heal two. So when you're starting to stabilize, um, let's say they, they can you know threaten you, lethal with like kill spell or like burn spells or like just going wide boards of pressure. Guiding Touch is nice because you can still just play whatever you're going to play that turn, but also just heal with Guiding Touch. And it actually wins you so, so many games. Uh, being able to like just draw into this later in the game and then heal and then like their win condition pretty much just gone because their win condition was like Oh, man, he's got to play a really soul and like he has mind splitter like we're about to lose But luckily he's at such a life We can just get one final push in to try and kill you and guy in touch heals you back and you actually live and then you just win um, Happens a lot whereas shield bear and AK researcher as blockers if you do it for turn they wouldn't do anything because it's just a 1-3 or 3-6 but um you, you can still play a creature and heal. So you're getting your blockers and you're getting extra healing. It's really nice. Anyways, um, Fleet Tracker is good in the Challenger deck, the Challenger version. I like this card a lot. It's pretty cool. Um, this could be a good blocker, Slayer Soldier, early game. This is good in the Challenger version. This is a good card in general. I, I, I play it in and out of the deck when I'm summoning, create a random dragon follower in hand. Uh, pretty good. And um, depends on the right meta. But I think it's it's overall it's good it's good against the general decks, but against all the top decks like uh, particularly against like Lee Sin and stuff, it doesn't really do much. But I, I like it in general versus like normal decks. Um, Pale Cascade's very good in this deck. It's actually quite rough. I didn't find space for it in this version. I like this card a lot in this deck. Uh, Pale Cascade's just a good card. Sharp Sight's also very good. Giving out like plus two plus two like a buck against Lucid this round. It's good. Um, Slayer Shield Bear. Good, really good blocker. Uh, amazing defender gets, becomes a 3-6 for the turn. What else? 
Dragon's Clutch. There's probably people wondering why I don't play Dragon's Clutch. I don't know. It, you already have like an abundance of dragons. I feel like my issue is rarely ever not having too many dragons. The only time it is like that is if I play Mobile as run out of steam, but Eclipse Dragon's Nightfall effect can give you extra steam without having to run like multiple things. The cool part of this card is that um, it can give you like a combo like Eclipse Dragon Rain Soul. I can maybe, f you could find space for this card. It's actually quite good. Uh, you could definitely find space for this card. I just didn't find space in this version because I felt everything was very important. It's kind of tough to cut things. Like, maybe Judgment, but Judgment's, like, a huge perk to this deck. Uh, so, like, I, I found a lot more success playing Judgment. I didn't play at the beginning. Uh, in theory, I didn't sound, like, too crazy good against the meta or anything like that. And I still don't really know if it is, but it, it's been very successful for me, and I've just been doing amazing with it. So, I'm, I guess it's just... You, don't, you want to be more theory-based than result-based when making decks and thinking about the game, but... For now, if it's work, not broke, don't fix it. I guess I'm just going to keep playing Judgment. It's been good for me. It has it does have a lot of synergy with the Furies and Raiding Guardian Fuse Firebrand. But yeah, you can fit in Dragon's Clutch if you want. Um, you can edit the deck however you want. There's some, some room for, for editing things. But yeah, I like Dragon's Clutch. Um, what's next? Relis Pursuit is quite good to give yourself a win condition if the games get too long. Your opponent, uh, some crazy... I don't know, it just finishes games. It's, it's good. Relis Pursuit is good in this deck. I've, I've done good with Relis Pursuit. In my other decks, and I run it my challenger version too. This is a good challenger for this deck too. Um, Strafing Strike could be good. Um, a bit more expensive, you know, it costs more mana in single combat. That's why I run single combat over it. But it does heal the Dragon Alley if um, if it's if it's a Dragon Alley I battled, and it's nice because they get Fury and then heal back. But Strafing or single combat being cheaper is to me more efficient, especially with like Radiant Guardian stuff. It's really good that single combat and Radiant Guardian. You don't have to pay the extra mana. Really just fits the curve better to have single combat all the time. It's just a, it's just mana efficient. Um, okay. There's definitely a lot more cards. Let's see here. What it's getting over. Okay, let's, let's get in, let's just make this quick. Concert track could be good. You know, activates fury. It kills it kills big threats. It's the way you kill big threats sometimes. Um, this card's good. I'm gonna look out when I'm someone if you hold a dragon rally. Card's pretty good. Uh, I played it in some variants, I liked it. So through the bold is actually very good. Six stat line's pretty important in this meta. Um, and Volius Vox, this card's good in this deck. I really like it. When an ally of fury kills an enemy first time, create a random dragon in your hand, flower hand. The reason I like this card a lot is because it's it's because it's discounted by Herald. Um, you can play this on turn five. And a five-six on turn five that has an effect like this with Fury is very good. Uh, I played a lot of variants of Vox and had good success. I like Vox a lot. Um, yeah, Vox is good. And maybe that's it. Oh, there's one more Kadrigan. Yeah, I've actually played a few variants of Kadrigan. Um, giving other allies plus two plus two everywhere. Cost nine, so if you have a discounted Eclipse Dragon and you play it and you draw a Reliant Soul for turn, you actually can't play Eclipse Dragon and then Reliant Soul the next turn. You have to have the Reliant Soul mobilized also. But with Kadrigan, you don't. With Kodrigan, you can have a discounted Eclipse Dragon, play Eclipse Dragon, then play Kodrigan next turn off the discounted uh, Eclipse Dragon effect. Very good. Um, I'd play this if the matchup spread or like the meta was it was better than the meta. I could be plus two, plus two everywhere. A lot of decks can't deal with that effect, like having your all your stats so big. I've actually played a lot of variants with Kodrigan to get success, maybe even as a one of them time. Sometimes, you know, yeah, mix the numbers with the Reliant Soul in this. I like this card a lot, but in this version, this is the way it is. I haven't really played this card too much in this deck. Uh, it's pretty expensive, and it's already at Running Souls Champ spell, so that's nice. But yeah, there it is. That's my dragon deck. If you have any questions, let me know. Alright, let's try and play some games. I have my Smurf account, um, this is Platinum 3, with uh, Running Souls Shyvana. Let's let's see what we can do here. Drewby, 1, 1, 2, 3. Alright, so we're playing against Aggro. Uh, Pirate Aggro is pretty popular in Gold and Platinum ranks. Um, not quite. It's still good in Master Ranks, but not quite as good. Um, this is a very weird hand. You definitely want Radiant Guardian in this matchup, that's for sure. And you definitely still want Herald because you want to be ramping to your dragons. So I think the plan is to start ramping and try and come back later with Radiant Guardian. We definitely want to draw a Shivana or White Flame. Okay, we got. Okay, this is actually quite a good hand for this matchup. Judgment can heal our whole field back too. The cool thing about Judgment with Radiant Guardian is they don't have ways to deal with that. Like if you if you can get this out. Without you know already being like too low knife and they attack and don't like, they don't burn spells to finish you. you have, oh, it's actually it's gonna be quite an interesting game. So we're taking a lot of damage here. We're taking six. 
But single combat, Dungeon Dragon, Radiant Guardian. Should be really good to come back here. And this is a challenger, so we can actually force the um, Radiant Guardian to come out by challenging things and then playing Radiant Guardian. Mobilize. That, that threw our hand for quite a whirl. Um, mm, that's not really a draw, actually. I would have much rather just stuck with the strategy we already have. Let's play this. We probably won't be using this this game. So this is pretty much a dead draw. It's actually probably one of the worst draws we could have drawn. But it's still an amazing card for the deck, so it's fine. Alright, let's get 4 damage in. He probably won't block, yeah. Okay. Our other play was like... A weird mobilized play where we just like block with this and then play a Radiant Garden in turn earlier, but I think this is fine. Okay. We're good, we're good. We're fine. Maybe should have blocked this. I should have thought about it a little bit longer, but sorry. Right. So I think, the next, I think the play here is actually just to mobilize. And then play this. We're gonna try and challenge her and then play Radiant Guardian next turn. And try and come back. That's that's my game plan at least. Get rain, that's fine. Not, not that big a deal. We got eight, pretty low. We can try and trade here. With Misfortune, he might have another Make It Rain or something, but... We have Radiant Guardian with single combat, single combat and Judgment, which is very good. Okay, one way or another this is going to die here, which is great. That's a good trade. It's a very good trade. So if he tries to attack, we can just Judgment his whole field, and if he doesn't, then we still can heal some life with single combat, guaranteed. This is discounted. Push Dragon here. Mm, that's pretty good. We still play Radiant Guardian here, though. See, this is what I'm talking about. He, drawing this later, instead of like if we drew draw Shield Bear Egghead right here, it'd still be a good blocker, but wouldn't be half as good as being able to play like Fuse Firebrand and then this. I mean, you see what I'm saying? We could play this in Shield Bear and Fuse, Fuse Firebrand in the same turn, but he probably won't give us enough actions. Like, he won't probably let us summon two cards before he attacks, so this is very good. This, this game's getting kind of scary, I'm not gonna lie. We're fine. Okay, I think it's worth turning off the judgment here. We have single combat. But we need to be able to block this without like losing our Radiant Guardian. Like he doesn't know that we have like all these ways to heal, so. To him he thinks he thinks this game's probably over. Alright, we'll keep it simple. Before we lose spell mana, you know, we're gonna lose a mana here. Let's just heal our Nexus and draw one. Still single combat open. Alright. Okay. That's interesting. We have a few ways we can do this. I would like to judgment with uh, the Radiant Guardian. I think we're still going to wait on that though. Because like, if we attack with both, and then he were to block this and I judgment this, that wouldn't, I wouldn't be healing that much. I want to be able to judgment with Radiant Guardian. They might be greedy though, because we never, might never have a chance to do that. I still think... Hmm. Yeah, I still think this is the right way to go. We should be healing 8 this turn. Which is phenomenal. We have to get rid of this, it's one damage. It is nice to know that he can't kill this. We can't kill him, but we'll still heal, so it's fine. This is a pretty good spot. Oh, nice. See, now he's at 7 and we're at 9. 
He thinks that this, this guy's gonna do a lot of damage, but like if he fervors it and makes me combat it, it's game over. And there's, he can't be Judgment. There's no way around Judgment at this point. We have Mind Splitter to lock down his field. This game's looking very, very, very good. Pretty much no way around the cards we have. Just because single combat's so versatile. I don't want to say no way around it, but it is looking good for us. Yeah, he's in, he's in deep thought here because, I mean, he's in a tough spot here. We have Radiant Guardian, we got the dragons going, this nice challenge picking out his field, he can't get rid of this. Decimate. This is a very good single combat here, because Rusty plays like Blade Judge, which they don't play. The MFGP doesn't play that. We can single combat here. Um, wait, am I missing something? Why are we not healing? Hold on, I'm, I'm having a... My brain is failing. Wait, what? Is that a visual bug? Because this should kill each other. And then this should... Dig oh, because that's... Okay. Sorry, my brain... My brain is very small. Okay. So then, yeah, we do... <laughs> we heal four, and then we take four again. Okay. We're good. We are good. We are great. We are great. Everything is great. All right. So here, uh, this is—it's very good. He played a unit here. This, this, because these could have been burn spells, which would have been somewhat dangerous, I guess. Even though we're such a good spot. Uh, this is this card's basically useless. This is basically a blank. Hmm. Like <laughs> yeah, we can't really lose here. Um, I'll pass because. If he attacks with everything to try and go wider than us, we judgment. And if he only attacks with this, then you know we don't care. It's happening anyway. Like I could play this here, but there's no reason to play this now because put me put it this way: if I play this now, I'm tapping on judgment, which means we lose the possibility of judgment his whole field if he attacks with everything to try and go really wide. Um, and if we pass and he passes back, then he loses two damage by not attacking the spray fins. So this is a very good pass. Okay, just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Okay. There's not too much mana and only has two cards in hand, so he's pretty low on resources overall. Here we can just scare these. All right, I walked. He shouldn't really be able to do much to beat us. Like it's pretty much out of out of hope, hope and dreams. All right. So. Put this out of the way. Try to get some damage here. We don't need to get rid of this because it's just a, it's just gonna be a kind of blocker. I think we just hold down the game like this. So the plan here is that he blocks with all these cards or these two cards, right? And then we judgment with Radiant Guardian and heal everything back. Okay. I think we lose if he has double fervor and uses it on both his back row, right? Otherwise we should win. He might have a fervor from this, but having double is pretty low chances. Otherwise we should win right here. Okay, so we, we win. Because now even if he has double fervor... So here, here he's doing this to dodge the lifesteal, right? Since this dies, we don't get any of the healing. But we change judgment blow up his whole field, he goes to 2 and we go to 19. And it's, I mean, an aggro deck that's pretty much out of resources. These are both stunned. This is his big threat, is Gangplank level up and stunned. Zap Spray from Elusive stuns. This should be a win right here. Um, even a second Fervor at this point won't save him because even if he gets a Fervor off, this one still gets stopped and we blow up his whole field. And it's all going to be healed because of Radiant Guardian. So yeah, this is pretty much game. Uh, I'm not sure what he's thinking about. Yeah, I think that's rendering. Sweet. Oh, good game. We're up against Weirdo Magnet. We're playing against um, Trundle Freyorts. This is actually one of the best decks in the entire game. I think it's the second best deck in the entire game after Lee Sin. If he is playing what I think it is, Mono Trundle, Freyorts Shadows usually Trundle Lados Control. 
Um, very popular, it's hit rank 1 multiple times this season, so this is a tier 1 matchup for sure. Here we're going to full mulligan. As much as you want to get the crazy like Eclipse Dragon combos off, uh, we need to get the early game first. So it's full mulligan, but definitely keep your other dragons to ramp with. It can be dealt with by Avalanche or Vile Feast, which is kind of rough, but that's alright. So this hand's cool because we have Herald and Mobilize, so I can show you how this hand plays out. Hopefully he won't just kill us instantly, but he probably will. But either way, you pass the first few turns, you bank the spell mana for Mobilize. You want to wait till turn three because we okay we didn't draw a creature, but imagine we drew a creature here. You want to wait. You don't want to do this on turn two because then you're not seeing what you draw first. You want to wait till turn three because this could have been another creature that could have been discounted. So you you get the final card, you know, the final creature, and then you mobilize. That's pretty much the game plan here. So we play Herald the Dragon here. Hope he doesn't kill it instantly. Uh, then we play Shivana. Uh, you could play Shivana straight up, but I think it's worth getting the Herald the Dragon on the field here. Even if he uses a spell on it, we still have this to play, and it, it's just worth it overall. All right, pretty good. Um, counting this won't won't kill it because they buffed this to zero four, so it's okay. We attack with both here. These don't have any spells that can stop this. He'll probably just maybe block this or something. I don't know. If you were to block the Herald of the Dragon, if he doesn't, we do one extra damage, which is nice. If you were to block it, it puts it in range of Dragon Guard, which is cool. But either way, we have the Screeching Dragon um, to get rid of this, hopefully. Wow, we still the old ones. Dang. Okay, this is not actually a trish. That's not really played in the Tundra Leader's Control. That's actually a very scary card. Um, he already gained two empty mana crystals, and that's very good because that's how he wins this matchup. Uh, it's not really... We don't have any crazy pressure to threaten him with. Like, he's already at eight mana this turn. So we don't want to develop because he, we don't want him to play something incredibly scary. Um, let's just keep it simple. Fuck this. Attack with everything. So, the way you want to level up Shivana, this is actually a common scenario I talked about when building the deck, is that you attack with Shivana, she's 4 or 12, then play Screeching Dragon and attack again. It makes Screeching Dragon go first, and then she levels up after this attack. So, quite good, we get to level up Shivana right now. Um, after her, her, after her attack goes through, she don't get the straight strike, but we do have a level Shivana, which is very good. Amazing animation, by the way. So sick. So sick. But yeah, she's actually really strong when she's leveled up. Um, at least in terms of her stats. And she gets Fury. She's a, she, she has a very weak, like, base form, but a strong, uh, leveled up. So, we don't want to play too much into Ruination, which is scary, but this is Spell Shield, so it's alright. And this puts a risk reward, like, if he doesn't have the Ruination, he, he's probably gonna lose, right? He, he needs to have Ruination. He already had a good Ruination. So if he has Ruination, it's whatever. So this will give her the spell shield, but it's fine. If he doesn't have Ruination, then developing this is so, so strong. So our field's really strong for turn 5. He's thinking quite a bit. I'm not really sure about what. Um, even if he Ruinations, he taps out. It's alright. And if he Ruinations, we have another Shivana, and this is a leveled up Shivana in our hand. So very, very good stuff. Overall. Okay. Interesting. Let's see if he has Ruination. If he does, he'd have to do it right away. He could pass and then see if I develop and then Ruination, but that's super greedy because I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna develop anything. Like, if he tries to big brain us to be super smart and be like, huh, I'll just pass, make him think I have nothing, and then he'll develop and I'll get an even bigger Ruination, but I'm not gonna fall for that if he tries to pull something sneaky like that. Okay, he's gonna Ruination straight up. Cool, that's what we talked about. Um, you know, not great for us, but he's at seven. We have a 5-5 five, five of Fury, he only has two mana left, and now they get Love of Shivana on the field. Very good. Play this first instead of this, because we, uh, we want to open attack here. Okay, so the cool thing here is all we have to do is like keep attacking and pressuring him, and then um, you know we'll have him relatively low, so when we start grinding in the late game, if we can get like a Relian Soul out, we won't have to do too much to finish him off, which is nice. And of course, if we played a White Flame Tech 3, we could play another Ruination or whatever, like a blocker or something. Vengeance. Alright, so we have him down to 5 health. Pretty good. It's funny this is even highlighted. We can use this, I guess. Um, pretty good. We have Strafing Strike to deal with like smaller threats, which he might play because he only has 4 mana. He doesn't. Um, let's play this. He gets Ruination, but it's not the end of the world. Um, but we want to definitely keep up the pressure. Hopefully, we, we draw like a Mind Splitter or a Cliff Dragon. Because the cool thing we're developing here is if we draw a big dragon like Mind Split Eclipse Dragon and we develop, then we are able to play both. We have a wider board. Let's see what this is. Ooh, is that for Ladros? Yes. This can actually kill you in one turn, this combo. It's pretty pretty brutal. He plays it, uh, and then he can Atrocity, and it's 19 damage, but 
Let's say he has unspeakable horror and um Let's say he has, he has unspeakable horror and atrocity, then it, it kills us. That's pretty much the combo is it does 19 damage in, in one go and it heals him and it, it re, it's a reoccurring card. It's a very good combo. This is a tier one deck, it's the second best deck in the game. They usually don't play voice of the old ones though. Oh no. So now we're in atrocity range. Which is rough. Um, we should lose this game if he plays it correctly. But he might mess up. But wait, even if he messes up, we lose. Yeah. Because we could try and attack early in judgment, but we're not strong enough. Um, like, even if we were to go like this, and then he atrocity chain judgment, it won't kill us. Our guy's not strong enough to stop the atrocity. So if you atrocity, we lose. Let's just develop here. I'm just getting more pressure on the field. Hope he doesn't have atrocity, but he probably does. He's probably thinking about single combat now. Um, but yeah, we should lose here. The atrocities, we don't have to go in combat, so that's game. Yeah, that's game. Well, this is the second best deck in the game. I mean, this deck's really, 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 really strong. It is what it is. Well, all in all, GG's. Um, this deck's very good, I think. Uh, I'm still working on getting it even better than it already is. And it, um, yeah, it's good. I like it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I was able to almost beat, you know, a tier one deck. This deck, I've had a lot more struggles with this deck in the past. Where is it? Where when I was first, the first three days of the new rank season, I only played Shivana. I really get master rank one Shivana. And I think this deck came a long way, and I'm excited to make it even better. Um, we went one and one. That's all right. And I mean, I think if I kept playing, we'd have a pretty positive record. I overall think that we'd do pretty good. And yeah. The deck's a lot of fun, so definitely think it's a, quite a good deck, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.